I also sent over the, oh, this is the, uh, this is the Tiny ETI. How did, how did that get there? Uh, it's actually the same cooler, it's kind of hard to tell them apart. But this is the RX 580, we're going to take a look at it in the video to see if it's any good, worth your money, and what the performance is like. Let's take a look. Just as a quick note by the way, the 10 ETI cooler is almost identical to the RX 580s, uh, right down to not having the little GeForce GTX sticker up here, but really it's the same backplate, it's the same front cooler, uh, there's a little bit of a difference in the middle, but it is actually uh, fairly similar indeed. So if you've seen a Strix card in the last year or two, you'll know that it's a very stylish triple fan design, has LEDs surrounding the fans and of course LEDs on the side and in this case also has LEDs on the RG logo on the backplate as well. The backplate is a pretty stylish affair, it's sort of brushed aluminium with some cool designs on it too and overall it's just a very stylish looking card. On the back of the card you'll actually find two 4 pin PWM fan headers, these are for fans that directly affect the temperature of the graphics card so you can plug in those fans to the back of your card and then have the graphics card monitor and change the, those fan speeds, say, you know, one that's blowing directly onto the, the card or maybe one that's on your side panel or something like that, if those actually still exist. Uh, so you, you can do that if you like. Of course, you do have uh, the rear IO as well, which is uh, DVI-D, uh, three display ports and one HDMI port. And of course, from the side, you have a very beefy 2.5 uh, slot graphics card, a lot of heatsink material to, to deal with there. And of course, a single eight pin power connector at the back. The card specs are almost identical to the the last generation RX 480, so basically the exact same core design. In fact, a lot of people have uh, noticed that you can actually flash your old RX 480 to be effectively an RX 580 and get a pretty good performance improvement from it, but the main difference here is uh, the clock speed being 1380 in OC mode and 1360 in the standard and by default gaming mode. You also still have 2304 stream processors inside 36 CUs, I believe 32 ROPs and 144 texture units to match as well. Just a quick note on the temperatures and the acoustics for the card. Temperature wise, this card maxed out at 62 degrees Celsius, which is really, really impressive. I mean, obviously this is the same cooler as is on the 1080 Ti, and the 1080 Ti maxed out at 68 degrees for me here, so that's a, a really impressive overall uh, sort of number for you. And of course, in terms of acoustics, the fans turn themselves off when they're not being used, which is very nice for a nice silent build. And when they are, you know, really f uh, pushing full load on gaming, it really is pretty quiet as well, so that's also pretty awesome. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's take a look at the performance for the card. Now, of course this card isn't designed to be a 4K gaming machine, it's more uh, that you know really excels at 1080p and 1440p, so that's where I would focus on most for the for these numbers here. Now in Dirt Rally it's really impressive seeing 100 FPS average on ultra settings at 1080p with even 70 FPS average at 1440p, so fairly impressive there. In GTA 5 you're definitely going to see a benefit to a 144Hz 1080p display if you have this card running on very high settings settings, as you're seeing 123 FPS average there with 88 on the uh, 1440p resolution. In Do uh, Doom with uh, Vulcan, you were, especially on ultra settings as well, you're seeing 140 FPS average there and 90 FPS average at 1440p, so again, really very impressive. Unit in Heaven, which is actually a benchmark I'm planning on phasing out fairly shortly, but for comparison's sake is done here, is 90 FPS at 1080p and 54 FPS at 1440p. Overall, really impressive. Now I'm going to be doing a full video with the RX 480, RX 580 and the new generation of 1060 with a faster memory. I'm going to be doing a full video on that with full retesting but from my current testing from my original Strix review versus this one which obviously does have some driver improvements in theory anyway, uh, this one is generally about 5 FPS faster in most titles. Of course that's a nice performance bump from, from what I've seen here so if you are looking to get a new graphics card if you don't already have an RX 480 kind of thing then this one is certainly a very nice shout but if you do have a 480 maybe just have a go at overclocking it or maybe even try flashing it if you so dare and of course you're still getting a pretty similar performance as well so if you do have a 480 it may not be a reason to upgrade but if you have older cards or you just want a bit more power from what you currently have then this is certainly a pretty nice shout and of course being a Strix card it is just monstrously large very good at cooling itself and a little bit of an overclock too. This card in particular is still pretty expensive likely due to just supply and demand at the time of filming 
overwhelming. So right now in the UK, it's about £300, which compared to especially RX 480s that are even the Strix model, you're seeing more like £250 to £200. So it is fairly expensive at this point in time, although that is likely to change, as I said, as supply increases and demand decreases. So I'm going to go with a 4 for 5 money here. In terms of performance, it really has to be a 5 with functionality also going to be a 5 as well. Link styling for me is going to be a 4.5 with a Tetsu Mubi score of a 5 and a Gold Award. This card is really impressive, although I really am still a little bit disappointed that AMD has gone the route of effectively rebranding the cards as if it's some sort of brand new magical thing when you're, they're providing the exact same core with only minor manufacturing improvements that allow it to overclock a bit higher. So for me, I'd really like to have seen them label this as an RX 480 or even something like an RX 480 Ti or OC edition or just something like that to make people think that it's not some magical new uh, core, it's new design. There really is only slight manufacturing improvements. So uh, that is just something to, to bear in mind. This really is not aimed for anyone with a 4 series card, at least a 480 anyway. So if you have older cards or lower cards, then maybe this is one for you. But if you have a uh, 480, I really wouldn't recommend upgrading at this point in time and do stick around for Vega. If you want to check out more about this card, uh, especially the price when and where you watch this, take a look at the links in the description down below. I'd really appreciate it if you could support the channel by taking a look at the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links in the description down below as well. And if you want to support me even further, you can check out the merchandise link where you can either get some Tech and GB related stuff or just some funny you know, tech joke kind of stuff as well. There's a few original designs in there as as well so if you want to check that out I'd really appreciate it. I'll leave some links over here for some other videos and of course the subscribe button over this side. I'd really appreciate it if you did enjoy the video to hit that subscribe button and let me know what you thought in the comments down below. If you've got any questions about the card as I said leave me a comment down below and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can and uh, yeah other than that thank you for watching don't forget to share the video as well it does definitely help and we'll see you all in the next one.